<gasps> a justified greed, an excused spoiledness, and an ingrained entitlement. Today we're discussing demanded reciprocity here on Ohm School Live. Reciprocity is usually thought of a kind and generous fair and loving uh, action, right? But it's often abused and misunderstood. And we find ourselves in a society filled with obligated giving and receiving. We have our in-house school here, uh, GP <laughs> Walsh, a master spiritual teacher, and he is here to help us figure this, um, you know, walk us through this, this uncomfortability that we've now, <laughs> you know, adopted as opposed to embracing the loving give and take of reciprocity. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, a healthy reciprocity is necessary for all relationships, you know, because if we really didn't need any each other at all, right, then we wouldn't, you know, then there'd be no relationships, there'd be no, you know, we completely, we'd all just be hermits living in the cave, right? <laughs> um, but we're not, we do have human needs. And, and to ignore those, even on the most spiritual foundation, we do it our our own peril. And you know, I get criticized by things like that, you know, by people who are strictly of the Advaita school. And I say, it, it, it's all well and good. It's true. There is a more transcendent place one can get to that is beyond all human need and desire. Right? But to just try to force yourself into doing that um, just leads to nothing but an increase in suffering. <laughs> it doesn't diminish it in the slightest and what's happened just over the over the the centuries is that more and more the the social demands and the, the societal power um has been uh laying on us more and more rules and obligations so that so that it's not about love it's about this 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 abstract morality this moral imperative of course, this is the fundamental crisis, the fundamental conflict between the Jewish rulers and Christ. Because, right? I mean, they represent, if you look at them metaphorically, they represent the law, enforcement. This is the way you have to be. This is the tribe. This is the way we've always done it. And he comes along and says, all you need to do is love God and love your neighbor. And, you'll, and all the rest will take care of itself. Well, of course, this completely undermines authority, right? <laughs> And, and, and leaves us in a very interesting position. How then do we actually embody that kind of love that is willing to give without expecting anything in return and utterly delighted when it gets something re in return and at the same time realizes that in a relationship it can't be left to, be go, to go out of balance. Hmm. But sometimes you have to say, you know, what? I need this. And... You know, part of the, you know, the, the fact that we're in a relationship, especially if it's committed, means that you've committed to meeting that as best you can. And it's, I'm not asking you to rob a bank. <laughs> you know, it's simply let's take care of each other. And what would a relationship be like if you never had to think about yourself because the other one was doing it for you? Mm -hmm. I, I'm talking about bliss. Yes. You know, um, when you're talking about that, and I love that we're going to bring it to the very, the very, the basic, what we all do is relationships. And there's this thing yes. that is popping up in my head that a lot of people um, might think in a relationship, like they owe me. And I'm hearing that, you know, like, so it's not just giving and taking. It's like, wait a second, where's my little scoreboard? I gave over here, 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 and here. You yeah. are off balance over here, here, and here. And so <laughs> then we somehow think, yeah, like, shame on you, how dare you not? And then it's, it is that demanded reciprocity, but it's also, um, you owe it to me. And if you don't, then there's something either A, wrong with me, or, or I'm going to withhold giving to you. And yes. it, it comes to this really a, val a way of valuing ourselves. And I think, mm -hmm. yeah, we're just losing the complete Everything. meaning of, of yeah, we're, we're lost. Every, <laughs> we're lost. Yeah. <laughs> at, at that point, it, you're, you're in a business. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. And, you know, look what business is doing to the world. I mean, it's like, it, it's no way to be human on any level, right? Like, yeah, we're, it's just business, you know? It's like, what the fuck? What are you talking about? <laughs> what are you talking about? Humanity is your biz our business, you know, to quote uh, Jacob Marley, right? Yes. And, um, 
it's it just shows how far away from genuine meaningful human relationships we've really gone and how much power has been taken away from just the, our innate nature and capacity to love and put into the hands of, of a societal structure that does not have the best interests of the individuals at heart. And so everything gets reduced to a transaction. Everything gets commodified. And, and if, you're all, if you are keeping score, your, your relationship is already in trouble. By the time it gets to the point where you're noticing that you're giving a whole lot more than you're getting, it's already, you, you know, it, you're already halfway out the door, right? Yeah. And we can overlook it. We can suppress that stuff, um, which is what happens. Oh, I'll give more. I'll give more. I'll give more and, until you're just so exhausted, right? You explode. It comes out sideways or you do something like cheat, have an affair, um, you know, pick up some kind of a of a compensatory addiction, um, all to just make up for the fact that you're not getting your needs met, right? Mm -hmm. But it requires a level of of spiritual maturity for two people to actually to to come to those terms, right? And 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 and, and in a mature way, you reckon I really need this, right? And the other person says, "Okay, I can give that to you," or "I can't." Mm. Because if I'm asking more than they can actually give, or I'm actually to step out of character, well, there's it. Don't even bother, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, the relationship cannot possibly work unless somebody unless somebody makes such huge concessions and is capable, so capable of suppressing their real feelings. <laughs> That, 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 the, the, for convenience sake, it carries on, even though it has no life in it. It's, it's basically in a coma, you know, you know, the heart's pumping, but there's nobody there. You mentioned about stepping out of character, and I'm glad you said that because a lot of us will identify with a character of I'm a giver, oh, or I'm selfish, I'm a taker, and I'm footloose and fancy free, and off I go, and I don't care. That's but, right. but so, how can it feels like we're uncomfortable with being a receiver, a taker, because um, we don't want to be judged like we're selfish. Or sometimes we want to be, a, oh, I don't know if I'm using the right word, but the martyr. And we keep mm -hmm. continue giving because, well, I don't know why, actually. Can we can we go with givers and takers <laughs> here and talk about this? Because I want us to be comfortable in both roles. They're both necessary. Absolutely, they're both necessary. Like everything else, it's it's a flow between opposites, right? Um, sometimes you have to be on the take. If you're down on the taking side, well, how, how can the other person give? They can't be a, a giver, right? I mean, it, I mean, let's you know, just it's pretty obvious, right? Um, so the the, but we like everything else in our lives, in the, in in how we are in relationship. It, it basically gets defined by the stuck energy of our early childhood. If the way I survived in my family system was to be the giver and ask nothing, right? Uh, or to not be the giver and ask nothing. And in my case, I withheld and asked nothing because I, I couldn't ask for nothing. It was dangerous to ask for something, right? I, I mean, it was far worse. It was far easier to go without than it was to ask simply because of the amount of pain that was involved, right? Yeah. So in a sense, I learned, eventually when I became spiritual, I went through a phase of, you know, give everything until there's absolutely nothing left, right? Ask nothing for yourself, total mm -hmm. deprivation. Didn't work, by the way. Didn't bring me any, anywhere of, of any value. Um, but it was a strategy I, that I learned. And, and it morphed, right? I couldn't ask for what I want. And it morphed when I got older. And when I had a spiritual experience, and now I was trying to, now that was the most important thing to me. And I was misled by this idea that somehow, you know, you just, if you can basically crucify the body enough, you'll attain Buddhahood, right? And, and so I ended up being the spiritual person. So now that, that became the justification for this, uh, for the incapacity to be able to simply ask for what I wanted. And now it had this very moral, spiritual, noble-sounding justification, and it was bullshit. 
<laughs> and it just cost me um, uh, completely unnecessary. But this is how it works, right? If somebody discovers <clears throat> that they can get what they want by being aggressive, by taking advantage of the givers, <clears throat> by just asserting themselves constantly, and, and they never learn how to be empathetic or feel anybody else's feelings. Well, that's the strategy that will continue on to life. And the one who who is whose strategy is taking and the one whose strategy is giving will get together and create a, a, a match made in hell. Yes, in hell. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, I, I see Donna is, is very much connecting here with this. I swear I had to laugh. Because she was, yes, bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and and it's so true that it's like we're we're taught so heavily on one side. I liked how you said that um, the spiritual. So once we become spiritual, you know, we have this enlightenment. <laughs> oh, it's me, angel sing. <laughs> um, then it, it's it's still it seems even more unfair to receive and more. But then how are we supposed to receive the grace of God and receive the love? Of, you know, it's it's such um. Oh, it's more than a dichotomy. It's it actually makes it impossible. And so I like that you said it's how we survived. So maybe we don't all have spiritual awakenings though. So we've survived, and now we're still going mm -hmm. through life. What will help us have like a, a switchover, a, a eye opening <laughs> experience? Um. Well, the way. I mean, there's really only one way. We have, we, ha we have to do the inquiry well enough that we see the flow, that we see that it is not one side or the other, right? And that the clinging to one side or the other is the result of trauma, and that's the nature of the egoic mind. It's trying to define itself in a particular persona, in a particular position, right? And, and it does everything it can to keep itself there until the suffering just gets intense enough that it goes something's got to break something's got to give um and that's usually what it takes to see through the illusions of these creations so that spirituality then becomes not a genuine inquiry into the nature of reality but yet another persona to take on that gives me kudos and pats on the back and gets some of my needs met and that's all it is and believe me i mean the only cre people on the planet that are more annoying than vegans are the spiritual people. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, vegans. And, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, they're so excited. They want to look in my world. Look where I am. What it? What fun it is. Um, the the. <laughs> The season right now, which we are, you know, a few days from Christmas and in this holiday season of giving and giving and giving. We, yes. It's such, um, <laughs> gosh, it's like if you want in this tribe, if you want to be accepted, if you, you know, or in the word title comes up as Scrooge. You know, so let's let's just talk about in general society and then we're going to go into relationships a little bit more one on one. But we'll keep this in the in the broad umbrella because this is where it starts into yes. the tribe. Society right now, we okay. So Scrooge, you know, oh, you don't have Scrooge, yeah. a fine excuse for picking a man's pocket every twenty fifth of December. That's right. Yes, <laughs> I dare you ask for that raise or a day off or something. <laughs> what a great and, line! <laughs> and that shows too when we finally get the courage to ask for something or do something that we're shut down. But but on the Scrooge part, if we if we don't have something to give. And we, so we don't give it. Is it that we just didn't work hard enough to find it to give, or can we truly not have it to give at times? All right. Well, first, let's make one thing clear in our culture it isn't give, 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 it's buy, buy, buy. Oh, that's the thrust. And it has been, and it has been really since just we, we became um, uh, uh, affluent after World War II. Gift giving was a, was an insignificant part of it. Matter of fact, for many, it had nothing to do with it. Nothing. Right. You know, maybe it was some candy to children or something, right? Uh, there was a little bit of gift giving that that happened. Um, you know, uh, certainly not during uh, during the early part of the of the twentieth century. Um, yeah, there was there was some 
you know, there was some gift giving going on, but it was extremely small. It was insignificant. It wasn't like mm -hmm. a, an obligatory thing, right? It wasn't in every advertisement. You know, Santa Claus being adopted as a commercial thing, right? Didn't happen till till late in the 30s or 40s, right? And 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 then the you know it, basically the retailers saw that this is hey this is let's let's convince everybody they should be giving a lot of gifts, just and so it was manufactured just like Valentine's Day was. <laughs> just like uh, there's several there's several others too that there you know and and it does um, you know valentine's day is is the high holy day for moet hennessy which sells all the champagne mm -hmm. it's huge they, they they actually spend months preparing for it guinness for guinness the high holy day is saint patrick's day and they literally because i my company used to have them as a client and they literally spend 15 months preparing for, for St. Patrick's Day, and so they have two teams, right? Right. Because they have the, the the skipping year, and that's what's happened. And so giving now has become completely materialistic. It isn't giving of your heart, giving of your energy, giving of your love, giving of your time. It's giving stuff, right? Yeah. And it's to find relationships with between parents and children. They don't really give their time at their children attention. They're on the phone, but they but they have the material prosperity to give them all this other stuff. If you give ch a child a lot of attention, he doesn't get spoiled. If you give him a lot of stuff, he does. Mm. It's right. It, it defines relationships. So uh, we have to realize that our cultural norm is is sick. It has gotten completely off track. It's completely missed the boat because it is so incredibly profitable, yeah. <laughs> right? So it is the season of buying. Mm -hmm. uh, and on that, I just I don't want to lose this part. Is um, a lot when you said that about it's how relationships can be defined. If parents are relying or children are relying on what are you giving me for Christmas or couples are relying on what they give for the anniversary or this there, what I, what I would feel, what I do feel actually, this is how I practice. Cause I don't do gift exchange in, in any of my relationships, family or otherwise um, is that. What? You, you, yeah, I, well, I mean, I can't expect anything from you. Nothing. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> 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 Nada, you got nothing, not even coal in the stocking. Yeah, not even coal. I love a lump of coal. I think it was a shiny and pretty. Yeah, a lump of coal would be great. Um, but you know what the thing is, is that I feel like they're looking to get let off the hook. You know what? They've done maybe a year of indiscretion. They forgot this. They weren't mindful. They've ignored this. They haven't spent time and attention. <laughs> but yet, here's the biggest gift because I really love you. And you're like, I really love you. Right? Yes. So yeah, it's like. I, it's, it's not balanced. Yeah. No, it's not. It's completely inconsistent. It, 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 and this is where we've gotten off and been indoctrinated on it. I mean, a kid growing up in the 50s, I mean, Christmas was like the most magnificent thing ever. I mean, the, you know, your letters to Santa and I'm going through the Sears and Ward's catalogs, right? And, you know, my parents really never had much of the money to get all the things that were on my list, right? <laughs> they, you know, bar barely even close. <laughs> not even close. I mean, Right. But you could see how it was instilled in to yes. want, to want, to want, to want. Mm -hmm. And and you can trace that culturally into the teenagers and to all sorts of different things that happened during that period of time, mm -hmm. uh, which was a boon for industry, which is a boon for the businesses, but was totally deteriorating of relationships because they become oriented around what you can and cannot give. Right. And so the the you know the 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 providers, the parents or, or whatever, that can give the most, the biggest house, the biggest stuff, all of these things, they're regarded as being the best providers, okay? Rather than the ones who literally give love and an abundance of love. And that that's there if if you don't give anything at all. <laughs> When it comes to <laughs> tribes, real real tribes, um, yes. other cultures who don't celebrate, um, or let's call it celebrate. Let's don't don't have that Christmas thing. Um, yeah. Because um, also, I believe that when you do have a holiday that's very specific or annual, you just remind it. It's just pushed into you and ingrained into you even further. But what about the cultures, the um, yeah, who don't celebrate that? What is their reciprocity involved? Um, I guess, yeah, how does that, what is that? It's just a whole different look. 
of what well it's a whole different feel it, it it's 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 communal there's an there's an innate sense that we are in fact dependent upon each other we're interdependent not codependent mm -hmm. and you know the, the the native americans would say oh somebody is homeless they wouldn't go to oh that's too bad they give them a home you need a blanket here's a blanket right and so it was a constant interchange of recognizing our, our interdependence on one another. And as a result, taking pride in, and, and, and uh, this is just what you did, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? I've got two blankets, you've got none. Here, take a blanket. <laughs> I, I mean, when you look at it, it's like, duh. I mean, it's, just, <laughs> I mean, it's like, what else would, what else? but now it's like, they did not have the whole concept of property that we have. We didn't. They didn't measure themselves by possessions, mm -hmm. right? and, and so it was a. And they still don't. Right? You know the, the the tribes that are still around. They still they still don't, because it's irrelevant. Mm -hmm. I mean, really, look. How much can you actually accumulate? Right? Mm -hmm. And, and have use for it. You don't have any use for it. I mean, these guys with, you know, billionaires, they, they have no use for it. It's of zero value. Right? <laughs> Except for the egoic status and they all get together and brag about what they've done. Uh, 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 other, than, other than that, there's no value in it. It brings them nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and so we might also, we might, we might, most of us maybe we can look around and, and feel that, wow, I'm, you know, have an abundance of nothing <laughs> in my, in my life as well. Well, look at me, I'm an, abu I'm ab an abundant in nothing, but, um, and then we think, well, we'll give it away. And then we feel better because we, we donated all of our crap, you know, unnecessary things, but yet yeah. it's, it, that, does that fulfill a feeling of giving when we just give stuff that we didn't even really value? Well, yeah, to a certain extent. When you give something you really do value, obviously it has more. But when I was, um, when I was um, selling all my stuff before this move, um, I had a whole bunch of stuff there that I was just going to have to give away. A whole bunch of stuff, a whole carload of stuff just went to the Salvation Army. Um, and, you know, they're all, yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. They're extremely appreciative of it. And it's not like, you know, it's like it was like blankets and sheets and towels and a bunch of stuff that would be useful to me, but I can't take them with, right? So, I, you know, I what's the best place to give them? And, and I don't really trust Goodwill. There's a lot of shady stuff going on there. So I, I went to the... Uh, to the Salvation Army. But this this one couple came over one night because they wanted to buy the couch. Uh, and it's great uh, by the couch. I said, you know, I've got a couple of lamps. Do you want those? And uh, we made a deal on the lamps. And I said, you know, I have all this stuff here. Um, do you want any of it? Well, she tells me that her brother has moved here from Kansas City. Her brother is, is, is uh, handicapped in some way, right? wheelchair bound i think he's got nothing i said great take the pictures take the silverware take and they they just almost cleaned me out of all the stuff that i would have given away anyway it, but it really was nice to know where it was going i you know i wasn't yes. just giving and, and I, somebody would get it but i know the difference that i made in this guy's life right and at the same time i saved me a trip over to salvation army <laughs> yes yes they came to Everybody you went on that <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Yes. And Bernadette's comment: One man's garbage, another man's litter. This Grateful Dead puts it: One man gathers what another man spills. It's yes. a beautiful. It's a beautiful way of putting it. Yeah. It, it, what yes. What's the meaning of it? Well, it depends on who's looking at it. Right? Yes. You know, the fee, everybody loves the feeling of giving. Everybody loves it. Yeah, they don't feel yeah because if they feel like Scrooge in the movie, you know, when he was giving, he felt like he was really <laughs> truly being um, taken pieces from him, like he was, you know, breaking down. Um, and that's yes. is that because we are so ego um, in acting as that identity, the ego, that identity, saying that I don't have this to give, and it's it yes. hurts them. It's painful. oh yeah. Okay. It, it's way beyond the actual inherent need of us all to be to be safe and survive, right? Okay. Because that's taken care of, right? We've just mm -hmm. got this distorted egoic sense of okay, what when is enough, right? Mm -hmm. And we don't have that definition in the West. Enough is when I say so, 
right? And so I, you know, I'll continue to accumulate billions and billions. What's enough? And of course, that's the dissatisfaction. That's the, that's the, that's the hungry ghost. Um, that's what we really have to, have to find. What, what is enough? So you go beyond safety, then, right? Mm. And then it becomes purely about the ego. You know, the, the, and our in our illusions and delusions about it, right? And when the ego gets involved, it becomes a matter of personal status. It becomes money is no longer just the means. You know, on the first chakra, the the tribe, it means safety, security. I've got my needs met. On the second level, it means fun and freedom and doing stuff. And on the level of the the storyteller, the third chakra, it, it means status. It means position. It means power. It means place. Ah. Right. So my my value is attached to it. Right. And so, uh, you know, Ebenezer Scrooge as Jeff Bezos, <laughs> you, can, you know, Bill Gates, you could throw a lot of people's name in that hat, define themselves in terms of their in, in terms of their wealth. Um, and as and as a result, they'll 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 die before they give it up. And they convince themselves it's an entitlement. It's the, it's 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 the right thing. This is the way it's supposed to be, and you know the whole economic economic philosophy supports this idea that this is the way it's supposed to be. It's the only way. This is the way God wants it. I mean, it's almost scriptural at this point, uh, right? But yeah, can you see the difference between somebody who's just really content with I I have my needs met, right and I'm I'm fine. What more do what, what more do I need? And somebody says, I gotta have more. I gotta have more. I gotta have more, right? The 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 difference. The thing that defines one or the other is ego. Identity becomes invested in what I in what I have and how I appear to others. And then you enculturate that amongst everybody. And now everybody's keeping up with the, with the Kardashians. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I'm glad you brought up the money part specifically in here because this is an interesting thing is what, what it can actually go. I feel like people for people um, can go the opposite way. I'll say opposite is that we hold ourselves back from generating. Like we're, we're safe. We have enough money that we're safe. We have food, we're eating, we're eating, but, but we're, str we're struggling. Let's call it struggling. We're, we're mm -hmm. stressing. We're stressing where the next dollar is going to come. The paycheck is going to come. Our security in and our jobs, our clients. Um, and then, but we say, but we're no, we don't want to have an abundance because then that's not holy. <laughs> you know, or, so can we, are, can we yeah. actually harm and hurt ourselves by identifying with the other side of it not the way yeah, absolutely side. anytime you identify yourself you stop the flow right ah. anytime you take a position it doesn't matter which side it's on right i can't have any more right or i want it all right mm. they're both equally destructive okay i mean it's okay i have all my needs met and i'm open to more mm. Do I define myself by whether I get more or not? No, that's a completely different thing, right? Right? Am I upset if I don't get more? That's a completely different thing, right? Right? Do I feel as if, oh, if I have more, I, I won't be as spiritual? Well, that's a different thing, right? And these are all the ways in which we, um, these are all the ways in which we try to define a sense of self, based on these circumstances, right? So now to be spiritual means I must be broke. Yes. Mm -hmm. Or in some other places, uh, to be wealthy is, is a sign that God has favored you. Mm. It's the prosperity gospel, right? Right. Right. So uh, it, it, where it, it's none of those. It's the flow. I mean, we say it over and over again. It is... It is this capacity to move between all positions without taking a position so that so that I, I can be, you know, I can recognize that yeah, I have all my needs met, but I'd really like something. Right? Mm. Right? Mm. Or, you know what, there's a need that isn't met and I need that need met. I had that just recently. I was, you know, going, going around, I'm, you know, it, it getting difficult to go around. And I thought, you know what? I need a car period. And I just put it there and then I let it go. And then my friend found a car 
for 2,000 euro. It's 20 years old and only has 95,000 95, kilometers on it, which for those new in the US is like six, less than 60,000 miles, over 20 years old. It literally was driven by a woman who went to the store on the weekends and that was it. And her son can't let her drive it anymore because she's gotten too old and he was just trying to sell it. The interior looks like it's in from the showroom. I mean, it's in perfect condition. I'll sell it for more than I paid it for. And all I did was like, I need a car. That's all I did. Right. And I just, okay. May I ask here? Cause Who's so it? many people, people are going to comment. Is that the law of attraction? Because <laughs> so let, let's, let's, that is what that, that <laughs> reality of simply being present, honestly, and fully with your own, with your own needs as they are, and then letting go of any connection to the results has been wrongly termed the law of attraction. That, that power, that force, that, 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 that natural flowing of energy, right, is real. The name law of attraction is just kind of a modern thing that has gotten laid all sorts of marketing crap on top of it. And so it becomes this, I'm going to hold this and I'm going to, I didn't hold anything, <laughs> right? I just recognized a fact. I needed a car. And the recognition of that fact, and I went, okay. And I didn't think about it again. Okay. You didn't hold and then, mantra oh, it. I need a car. I need a car. Oh, car's I need a car. Up. I need a car. I didn't do my, <laughs> my, my, my book of uh, positive attributes and my vision board and put the picture of a car on over the bed mm -hmm. as I sleep. And I, none of that. Right. I let it go. Let right. It go. You did not take if a it's position. a real, if I didn't take a position, right. You know, it could very well, the answer is take public transportation, learn how to use it in Germany. And go, <laughs> okay. That could have been the answer. Right. But, you know, yeah. the need was, I just felt I need a car. Car came. Beautiful. It's ugly. <laughs> Where color is it? I have that. It's an, ugly, it's an ugly car. I don't know why they would put this weird checkerboard thing on it. It's like a, a, a Renault uh, Kangoo, which is French for kangaroo. <laughs> really? Wow. Yes. I'll, put, I'll put a picture up of it. Yes, it's not. An, it's not, it's, I, you know, it's, I am not going to get, you know, dates <laughs> from that car <laughs> whoa <Yeah. laughs> i love it already i can't wait no this is curiosity okay so everybody check back in the comments for pictures of the of the car <laughs> taxi yes i think they use these as taxis in like paris who said that yes because oh did somebody say that yeah yes, I, I think they're they oh look at that's brilliant yes <laughs> no it's mystery <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> now, for everybody who's tuning in, I just want to share with you that because um, um, we're we're doing the show here, which is Ohm School Live. However, and and we we know we're so happy that you're here, and we can read the comments. We wait till just after recess, which we're just going to go into in a minute here, and then after what, then we kind of go through the comments and see any questions yeah. or things like that. Some things are kind of grab my eye there a little bit, but um, we're going to yes. get to you. So yeah, please don't please don't think that we are we are ignoring. We you. are paying <laughs> attention. We are paying attention. Exactly. Yes. Yes, yes. But we decided, so, we decided in the beginning that, um, that, that this show is not going to be like satsang where we, you know, where I just answer questions, right? That we were going to, we were going to take the time to give a whole hour to a subject so that we could actually explore it, right? And not hop from one thing to another. And I really love the way it's come out because it does provide us the ability to go into something in more depth rather than, you know, rather than just, you know, I answer the question and move on to the next, which could be co from a completely different place. I just really like this, the way this has um, been going and the way you're managing it, producing oh. it, Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we, we the Q and A is very focused here, so we really appreciate that. Yes, um, and and I just I I was really I do love all of our topics. This one I I found so so timely. Yes, the season, but money and giving and taking. And I, I just love, I want to go back and before we go to com commercial recess <laughs> is, is when you said about not, not taking a position because this I'm, I'm, and we talked about ego and identity. So if we take a position of I'm giving today, I'm, I'm the giver in this relationship for now, whatever it is, could be at work. Maybe you're, you're in your position at work where you're, you're overworking. Yeah. 
Um, and then sometimes yeah. there, there's going to be a time where you need to receive, like receive your paycheck, receive some time off, receive some um, acclimation perhaps or something that that's okay. Like I, it's important that we know that by not taking a position doesn't mean you can't involve yourself in. What yeah. And you know, it's really amazing that the majority of people in the United States do not take their vacations. They work. They through, yeah. They oh. don't. It, it's really amazing how many people don't. Yeah. Just work through. They're afraid of their job, losing their job. I mean, there's Ooh. there's so much invested uh, in, in it that they just don't want to do anything to rock the boat, even things that they're entitled to. Yes. Okay. It's, okay. It's pretty. It's pretty interesting. Bringing up a very important thing that I just noticed the other day. So oftentimes, you know, I have um. A very, I'm a very flow person with, with money and it's not personal. So I don't really, it doesn't, I don't take it personally. So if I lend somebody money, I lend them money or if I, you know, put something out there, but then for some reason I experienced, I had nerves asking for this money to be paid back, but it wasn't even me. It was just, you know, yeah. paid a bill. Uh, somebody couldn't at times, so then they're going to pay it back. And um, I was like, why am I feeling uncomfortable? I was trying to like, is this a good day? Are Mondays good days to ask for money? No, Mondays are not good days to ask for money. <laughs> Fridays? No. Oh, it's a week and I don't want to ruin their... So I was like, why am I really putting too yes. much thought into this? And so I'm wondering if you want to put any comments. Um, why it's... When it's something is quote unquote owed to us um, or contractually, you know, there it's supposed to... Maybe we've done a job and now we need to get paid. How can we... How, why do we find that challenging to ask for something that is totally ours? Um, we just don't really know how. We we have a feeling that, that there's a kind of a feeling that underneath you really don't deserve it. All of those mm -hmm. things uh, uh, pop pop up there. There's there's an investment. Oh, I don't want to make it hard for them. You know, I there can be a little ego there. I don't want to. I don't want it to appear like I need the money. Um, there can be a million different little reasons for it. And what I suggest is when you have a feeling like that, to explore it, to use it as the opportunity for self-inquiry. It's the kind of thing you can use EFT with as well. Not to try to get rid of it, of course. This is my it's the thing I say over and over and over again about EFT because it is effective in that way. But if it's used in that way, you miss, you're missing a big chunk of what it's capable of. And that is to actually kind of bring out these, these, these deep patterns that make us really uh, uh, abandon what in fact is ours. Even the thought it's owed to me can feel uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. Right? You, am I, is anybody owed anything? I mean, how can I, you know, I mean, there's, I, 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 I could spend the whole hour just talking about all the different things that could create that kind of a feeling. Um, but it, it's better to realize if you feel that, realize that it, it's something that really is asking for your exploration. Mm. Don't just go, oh, pff, I always do that. Why am I afraid? And then beat yourself up a little bit and then try to drum up the courage. And one day you may have the courage and, and call them and ask them and they'll say no and you feel bad and you don't want to do it again, right? Rather than doing that, just, okay, wh where did this feeling come from? This isn't natural. This doesn't really make any sense. It doesn't really help me or them. Then where, where, what's really going on inside of me? When you're willing to make that kind of an inquiry, you're, you're in the space where whatever it is that it feels uncomfortable with that can come to the surface. And usually it's, um, uh, it's something that is not, uh, it's affecting more than just that. That's just one of the symptoms because the deeper you go, the more, the more, the more the the roots, <laughs> the tentacles have spread, and so you'll see that same incapacity reflecting itself all over the place, and Ooh. you get to the depth of these things, and one one little transformation can heal a million issues. Yes. Oh, wow. Yes. You know what? I can. That's going to lead well. So I was going to talk about the chakras and money, but. <laughs> go <laughs> that i can see that because just as you were sharing that um you know what came up it was funny it, for me right now everybody gets to watch this is me stepping into my student role my asking my questions um <laughs> is my one thing was i'm afraid of people um being so uncomfortable 
with the fact that they might owe me money that they might go, no, I'm not paying it back. And then I can't even have my score anymore. Like they do owe it. And then, and it does prevent me from being able to, you know, my flow, my flow will be stopped. Right. Because I'm like, I've got all this, this energy in a knot and it's not flowing. So one of the things, and I'm going to just dive into recess because on my recess, <laughs> I get to promote something. It's my bell that gives me permission. Um, <laughs> and I'm jumping right is, is the chakras and money, uh, money and chakras, of course, the workshop that you're going to be putting on in January. And this, I think, as you just said, heal one, one aspect and it can heal like all the other little tentacles that are attached to it. And so I didn't think I actually had a money thing until now. I'm like, wow, I really think I do have a little bit of a money thing if that came up. So um, I'd like to invite everybody to a workshop that's called money. I uh, can't remember if it's money and chakras or chakras and money. I think it's money and chakras now. <laughs> it's money. It's money through the chakras. The, yes, yeah. through. Through the chakras. Yeah. And I chose that name because what I wanted to do is to, I wanted to, I wanted to illustrate how we create, our, give money its meaning and create a relationship with it, which affects whether it's flowing or not into our lives. And and, the, and to do that through the various perspectives of what are called the chakras, aspects of consciousness, right? The part of you that only cares about safety is going to give one meaning to, to money. The part of you that only cares about pleasure, money is going to mean a completely different thing. As I was saying earlier, the, the ego, the storyteller, the third chakra, money has a completely different meaning. It's not just about safety or fun. It's about status and power. And that's the same way with all to the heart energy. It's about giving, right? To the visionary, it's the capacity to realize a dream. So the meaning that it has, the problem is that we get stuck in one particular meaning. We start seeing the world that way. We put, we put blinders on and we're not flowing anymore. And so I wanted to take money and move it through each one of the chakras to show you that there, each one is a different perspe perspe perspective and then bring you back to this place called the light at the center where you can then choose the one that's most appropriate and, and you can resolve these conflicts. And I'm also going to use EFT. It's actually called tapping on money through the chakras so that we can use EFT to help remove the various kinds of blocks and attachments that we have. I'm attached to a particular point of view about it. Money is bad. Money is evil. Money is money is great. Money is wonderful. Right? These are all views. It's nothing. I mean, it's absolutely nothing. <laughs> it is completely what we believe it to be, and and then we and we assign it a particular sense of of reality. So um, I want to basically I want to use this as a way of reconciling with that, so that you can have a new relationship with money that has that that is actually open and free and open to uh, to prosperity yeah. right and open to the most precious knowledge that you can possibly have and that is what is enough mm. the one who has enough is the wealthy one oh oh i love that the one who has enough is the wealthy one see i couldn't you did a beautiful job thank you gp <laughs> <laughs> so well and i'm trying to remember the day that I, I yes look you're gonna end up doing the whole thing yeah i think it's january 18th but i, I think i'm wrong so um 13th the 13th okay so yeah, yeah. so it's, it's gonna be here quicker than we think so three weeks time but just go to the link that we've got below here um you know and and be, be there with us because that's I, I i can't wait for this one <laughs> And, and uh, we got the super early bit at the super early bird price this time, which is just going to go to the first 10 people that sh that sign up. Right? Ooh, okay. So that it's like 50 bucks, 50 bucks off. Right. And then there'll be an wow, early bird okay. price, which is less, but then full price. Yeah. Okay. Um, first yeah. 10. So you, you do want to invite your friends, you know, even if they're going to be one of the 10, that's okay. Invite them. <laughs> so, oh my goodness. So, well, thank you so much. So we'll end recess on that one where's my cute bell gets to bring it there and um going back in i want to read there are so many things here is and uh donna yeah. i don't believe that you've i'm trying to think because i think donna i think she's coming in from my lifestyle love stories group um she has just really stepped into a new ownership um oh i don't want to say ownership do we own our we don't want to own a, a 
we want to have a good relationship with with reciprocity and, and money and all these things. We don't want to own anything. We just want to be. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, well, let's not let's not split hairs over the over the terms because okay. we talk about you know owning your feelings and stuff like that. What yeah. what it means is that uh, that being truthful and honest and accepting what you're feeling when you're feeling it, without trying to deny it or putting away. That mean, that's what it means to me when you own it. It's it, you're not in a state of denial of something, ah. and so so when you can you know even owning more of your power, stepping into and being able to accept more of your power, more of your authority, more of your capacity to say yes when you mean yes and no when you mean no. Um, and everything that goes everything that goes with that so that you become clearer and clearer about what does matter to you, what you do need, so that when the so when you're clear about it and and really when you're really clear about a need, it will show up in some way. Hmm. It, it, it will. Right, what what we get is engaged in. Do I really need it? Do I not need it? Do I really need it? Not, not need it? And, and it doesn't have to be. But that's all the mind trying to interpret it from one of the various positions. Right, mm -hmm. it's an absolute necessity to the inner nymph. Right, the one just wants to have fun. Oh, gotta have it. Oh, gotta have it. But to the inner, the inner drive towards safety. Are you kidding? Totally frivolous, useless. We don't need this at all. Put that money back in the bank. Yes. Okay. Both of us, both of those are in us, right? Yes. Now, what you want to own is both. Ah, right. And the question becomes, can I have this safely? Oh, oh, I like that. Simple, right? And now all of a sudden, both sides are, well, first you go, no. And then you go, oh, come on. <laughs> and eventually, eventually, if both sides are given, given equal time, the the reconciliation happens. It can't help it. Oh. It simply can't help it. Okay. Oh, 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 I'm so excited. Okay, aha moment right here. Okay. <laughs> okay, so can I have this safely also so that we could use this with reciprocity? Can I give this safely? Can I receive this safely? That yeah, it's the most fundamental uh, motivation in human beings. Wow. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm like, this, right this is the whole thing. This is why we don't get the things that we really want because there's a part of us that doesn't believe it's safe. And so we end up fighting with it. And of course, you're always going to lose that fight. You're fighting against 500 million years of evolution. And don't bother, right? Instead, how do you show it that it is safe? Right? Mm -hmm. And it isn't intellectual. It isn't, you can't art, talk it, talk to it. You might as well talk to a salamander about it. Right, there's no intellectual capacity whatsoever. It's purely instinctual, so you have to show it by creating an inner environment that is safe, so it doesn't need to defend itself anymore against you. Oh my gosh! Now you wow. have reconciled with yourself, and this is the open door. Okay. So okay. Wow. Okay, guys. I have to recap that because that was so. It's it. The perfect question asked, can I do this, whatever you're filling in the blank here, safely? Then mm -hmm. it's a matter of, you, you can't just stop there. Then we need to show it that it is safe to do that. Give, receive, uh -huh. own, take, whatever. <laughs> and then... And, um, and if some part of it isn't safe, oh. you say, ah, oh, you're right. And you take that advice and you alter the thing that you're, you're attempting to get or accomplish, right? Because there may, could be things that aren't safe. You could be just completely foolhardy in your, in your, in your insistence on it that you've just been denying this. This voice is stupid. It's going to say anything. It's just resistance. Got to get rid of it. But, but maybe it's like, dude, listen up, right? right? And the act of listening is where is, I, it all. It it just all it comes together because harmony is the natural state of the flow. And it's been an artificial state that has split this into, you know, this is the soul disconnect that I talk about. Yes. Wow. We really got to that. 
I'm going to say it, the spiritual center. Ooh, that's fun. The spiritual center of things. Because <laughs> <Yes. laughs> now I can, I'm oh, so many, you know, this always happens. Every show we do, I, Damn by show. this this time, so <laughs> many things have happened and flowed through. I was like, I need to get my notebook. I'm starting doing my own journal here. <laughs> so I want to jump into, I, there was a, a long story that was not long. Sorry, I didn't mean to say that, but um, a longer text that was written earlier. And I want to see if there was a question in there. Um, and hello, everyone. Let's see. <laughs> it was about a shirt or a top or a sweater or something. And I was like, I didn't get to read it properly. Um, we did that one. Did do? Yeah. Where is that one? Oh, here we go. Is it, was it Lily? It looks like Lily. Yeah. Uh, okay. What was this? Any strategies for getting rid of things um, like that super old Shirt, shirt, I think she was trying to say, that hasn't been worn for 20 years, but when you pick it up to give it away, you're all of a sudden, oh, it's okay. I know what she's saying. So, okay, so let's actually go with this because things that we are so attached to, we know that we don't need them anymore. So we've, we've surpassed mm -hmm. need, but we want them. Is this the is this the strategy where we explore why we still have an attachment? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, when, you, when you're when you looking at it, it's like it serves absolutely no value in my life whatsoever. Now, there are some things where it, the sentimental value, okay. it, it has a meaning about it, and that's enough, right? Oh. But when you start attaching that to everything, like an old shirt, <laughs> <laughs> you're kind of going, I think we're stretching this sentimental attachment kind of thing. And you said, does it really serve any practic uh, practical uh, value? Is it is it bringing me joy? Well, if I haven't worn it in 20 years, obviously not. Um, uh, is, is it just taking up uh, space? Is it, com is, it, is it contributing to the mental clutter, right? The, and the, you know, the, the energetic clutter, the feng shui clutter of, 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 of the space. And it's the kind of thing where... You, you then inquire, well, what, what is it that I'm so attached to? What mm -hmm. is it that makes me not want to let this go? And what you'll find at the root of that, unless there does have some special meaning, right? And you wore it on your first date with your husband, or you, you know, or, or, or some, you know, something that, you know, that does have, right? And and, and you can even still fit in it, yeah. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> <laughs> pat, pat on, pat, pat on the back, but. Putting that aside, what you'll find is there's just a sense that if I let go of something, I'm not going to get anything else. Mm. And that's usually what it's at, at the root of it. This kind of this feeling that, that this is there's a limited amount of good available to me. And, uh, you know, basically I'm, yeah. It's just this fear that uh, of not having of not having or being enough. That's a big point. I like to everybody feel as that um, a limited like limited. There's a limited amount that I will receive. So if I let it go, yeah. then I'll, uh, then it, nothing new is going to come in. And that was where mm -hmm. I wanted to talk. Like I have this thing about yeah, like if I get rid of something or give something away, it seems to always come back. Now I'm kind of dependent on it. I think I think I subconsciously just think it happens, but I need to. I think I would still like to improve that relationship and not subconsciously depend on it. I I would like to be where it doesn't matter if it did or not. Not that I'm like ah, I know it's going to come back. You know, <laughs> I think I feel like I'm a secret <laughs> weapon. But <laughs> yeah, well, that's the that's kind of the the amb ambivalence we all have to face because we don't really know. Right. Well, that's true. Right. I don't really and, know. And, and, and that's actually a good thing because if I really know, you know, it's a very different kind of knowing and a very different kind of spiritual maturity that lets things go and knows that some, there's going to be something else. That's kind of the transactional model. But when we let go, not knowing that, it's a completely different relationship with life itself. Yes, and the and the and the word for that is faith. Mm. Faith in the benevolent nature of life. Mm. Life is not at war with its own with its own with you, right? You are life, right? So there's not life, and then there's me, right? <laughs> <laughs> <That is laughs> there's cool. the universe, and then there's me, and that's everywhere except here. 
right? And we, we kind of get that sense. Well, you know, life is benevolent. Well, that's me. Mm-hmm. And the more we receive that, the more we accept that, we go, well, this is paradise. This is paradise regained. Mm-hmm. Yeah. My, par- my, my dear friend Martin, uh, who, wrote, who wrote the book and the whole, the whole project, Project Heaven on Earth, um, is now working on a second book called um, Paradise Found. And this is the sense of it, right? If if we can be kicked out of the garden, we can go back in. Oh, oh! Because <laughs> we didn't get actually get kicked out. We just we we just became convinced we didn't deserve it, and we walked out. We walked ourselves, yeah. <laughs> oh, there's a lot of beautiful as it, it. This um, in a sense, it feels like reciprocity in itself doesn't even exist because now we've divided it and that's just our, our image we've placed on the floor. Very good. Yes. No, it doesn't exist. It's just a conceptual thing that gets overlaid on what in fact is just the normal human relationships between giving because you want to give and receiving because you need to receive. Mm. And the natural flow and harmony of that, which is, um, which we all know. Right. I'm not saying anything anybody doesn't really know. We we recognize it when we see it. Right. Mm. I put it into words and go, oh yeah. And just you know, I'm just a reminder, right? I'm just a <laughs> post it on your ba- on your bathroom mirror. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that. <laughs> it is about being reminded. Yeah. So maybe what we, this is what it is, is we're reminding people that really what we're all seeking, you know is to feel safe with who we are. Yes, that's it. And, and to actually know who you are, right? Yeah. Because you know who you are, then you know the need is real or the need is just trivial. Mm. You know what you want. There's no argument, right? There's no, there's no conflict going on. Do I, should I, do I need it? None of that's, none of that's there. It's quiet. It's just, you know, it arises. It's part of me. I, I need that. I need that. Right. And then you let it go. Right. It doesn't, you know, I mean, there's, you don't stress over it. Right. You know, mm-hmm. knowing full well that not, not every need is going to be met and almost no need is met in the way that you think it's going to be. So true. That is so true. <laughs> I, and right now, just on a final, in our last minute that we have here, I just would love to take this off of external and um, objects and belongings and money. Um, because in the light letter, you actually quite, a, you guys have to read the light letter. The light letter itself is a great relationship tool. Um, and because uh, we really <laughs> talked about relationships and I want, and I, we just, the time just ran out. But um, if there's something we could, so is, instead of going through our stuff, like, uh, do I need it? Throw it out, donate, you know, do the piles in our relationships with, with whether it's our, a lover or our children or family, sister, siblings, um, it, how do we go through a list of, can I just let go of this? I don't need, I don't need to hang on to this emotion or, or thought about it. Is that something healthy to do too with declutter our relationships? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's all that way. We hold on to attitudes, beliefs, experiences, memories. I mean, that's really what it is when you're talking about a, an object. It's not the object. It's a memory. Yes. (laughs) And that's the association with it. If you recognize that, then you realize you don't need any object for that. That's why I I, I think Lily mentioned earlier about taking a picture of it. That's just like shifting. Yeah. Well, yeah, because it isn't. I, I, you know, in order to be doing this um, blog that I'm doing, the wandering sages, I'm talking about things, just my impressions. I've had to take selfies. I hate taking selfies. When I go someplace, I hate taking a picture of the place, right? Because I know I'll never look at it again, and I know I can't capture that moment. Mm-hmm. When I'm doing it, because you know, uh, if, you know, to just kind of add some visual to the, to we like thing, to see it people, too. and people are interested. You know, people <laughs> yes. are, people are interested in what this crazy old guy's doing now, and and so you know, I take the I take these pictures, but they don't have any meaning in and of themselves. It's the experience I had. And yeah, sometimes a picture you can bring it up and go, ah, yeah, that was really great. Right. Uh, But why? I hold on to that 
picture, right? If, if the time comes, you really don't need it any, any, anymore. The, 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 it isn't the object, it's the meaning. And you can lose the object, but you can't lose the meaning. And therefore, you will not lose anything. And this is how we can discern between what, where the real as substance is of life and where the, the, the transient is. And we can let go of the impermanent because the permanent is, is there. And if it's permanent, it doesn't matter if you let go of it or not. <laughs> it's right. there. Yeah. Yes, it's not dependent on our grip. And, um, and speaking yeah. of grip, just because I'm going to catch this last question um, as we go through from Warner. Hey, Lisa and GP. Hello. <laughs> what to do with an inner yearning for romantic love and connection? Is it a sign of spiritual immaturity or just a human need? Is that need? Well, yeah. Well, I could do, we could do a whole show on that, right? Maybe we should. Um, <laughs> yeah, maybe we should. Before I answer that, I want to throw this other thing in because somebody asked, GP and Mr., you found a place to stay? <laughs> I've afforded some opportunities from relatives, but your, your, your good will stop. Oh, that's, um, that's Bill, my friend. Jeez, Bill has okay. been hell. He's got some relatives here. Um, I found a place. This is really fun because uh, I, I needed a place. I knew it'd be quiet, a place where I could work, where it would be comfortable. Right? Again, a need, right? Put it out there. Mm -hmm. okay? So I find this place on Airbnb. I have a back and forth with him. He wasn't even sure he wanted to do it. Anyway, this is beautiful. It's like 30 square meters, right? This place. It's a big place. Um, and I'm sitting in the living room right now, and I've got a, a room. And he rents out two rooms, and another one's his. Well, I'm the only one he's rented a room to, and he's in Ecuador on business until the middle of January. I have the place to myself. <laughs> for a month. Wow. <laughs> for a month. <laughs> for a month. Yeah, it's mine. Yeah. Mm. And, and so, I mean, so again, it, 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 it just, it just happened. He's got everything I need and even a barbecue out in the back. I mean, it's just like, Ooh, the only thing I can't okay. touch is he's, he's got a Porsche and I can't drive. Uh, <laughs> no like, on that hey. One. <laughs> Hey, but you have Dang. your taxi, so don't get. See, don't I've, get got, all good. I've I've got my kangaroo. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, so this is the way. So I'm I'm actually still looking for a place that I can rent on a permanent. Oops, a rent for, on a permanent basis. Um, so don't stop yet, Bill. I'm still uh, I'm I'm still looking. Although I'm not sure Germany is going to be the place I'll be able to get residency. As a matter of fact, I'm pretty sure I won't. But you for right now. Possible. Portugal is the best, uh, the best opportunity, but I'm not quite ready to get down there yet. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm starting here. I'm still hoping things open up so I can do some live events. Yes. Um, that's really what I'm hoping for. And this is a nice central place to, uh, to do this. Germany, of course, is very, very close, but some other places might be more open, you know, go over to, uh, to the Netherlands, which is very close or Luxembourg. So I'm still looking at that. So anyway, now back to Bill. Or to to Werner. To, to Werner. Um, Werner. Oh, sorry. That is the well, I, here's what I always say: when we're talking about these desires, and the mind's trying to figure out, is it like, uh, you know, it's just this yearning, and it's not spiritual, and I need to transcend it in order to, you know, to come to Nirvana, uh, or is it is so am I spiritually immature by even thinking about it? I should just not feel it um or is it just a human need this is the way the mind's trying to sort things out to to try to come to a conclusion about it you don't need any of that okay just look the yearning for romantic love did you create it did you sit down one day and say you know i think i'm going to make a yearning for creative for romantic love i think i'm going to do that now okay <clears throat> Oh, I really want it. And all of a sudden, you, you know, right? really look, right? I, 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 this isn't philosophical. Look, right? You didn't create it. It's just there. It just happened, right? So, you know, your hair grows. You're not growing it. <laughs> your food digests. You're not, oh, okay, oh, no, I can't go anywhere tonight. I got all this food I got to digest. It, it just, it's part of life. It's just happening, Right? So we don't even want need to call it a human need. It is just it is just humanness. And there's the human need for safety, security, 
for companionship. There's also the need for fun, for pleasure, right? For, you know, for, you know, just for the sake, pleasure for the sake of pleasure. There, there's, the, there's the need to have our uh, relationships that, that contribute to a, ver- a, a lot of different parts of our lives, right? For that, for that get-go. All of that is just this feeling of wanting to be intimate with another human being. Right? to become one with another human being. And yes, it's the most natural thing in the world. I, so I don't even want to call it a need because that kind of puts it in a category. Right? It's like, don't call it a need, just I have, I have this desire for it. And, just, and then just, I didn't create it. If it goes away, I, okay, it goes away. What am I going to do about it? But as long as it's here, I acknowledge that it's here and yes, I would love to see that fulfilled. Now you're owning the desire, right? Now you're on this side of the equation, right? And of course, this is the, it is a very clever tool of the resistant energy, right? That doesn't want to do anything that's risky. And obviously intimate relationships are, they come with a bit of risk built in, right? <laughs> right? And, and one of the ways it, it, it suppresses that in order to keep things the same is it has you think, is this a good yearning? Is this a bad yearning? Is this spiritual? Is it not spiritual? Is this really a need kind of kind of thing? And what does that do? It just sucks all the energy out of what, in fact, is just this pure, innocent thing that's arisen in you, right? So just be with it, right? It's, it's, a, it's like something that's grown in your garden, and you don't even know the, what it is. It could be a rutabaga. It could be a rose. Right? You don't even know what it is, but it's there, and it's growing. Okay, I'm going to let it grow. And then on the other side, you can f- feel any resistance there is to it and any mind chatter and just go, oh, okay, it's just here. I don't have to do anything with it. I don't have to make it happen any more than I have to make my food digest. So as long as it's here, I acknowledge it's here. And if it's if it, there's a safe way that I could possibly have that, I'm good with that. I'll take it, right? If there isn't, well, that's that's too. N- notice I'm just letting go. I'm acknowledging the presence of it. Matter of fact, I'm even giving it more beauty and power. And at the same time, I'm completely letting go of my attachment to it. And in that sense, it is in the pure space where it can fulfill itself. And whether it does or not, it won't affect your 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 underlying sense of contentment. But inevitably, that contentment will manifest itself in contentment in relationship because that's what everything does. Content, it's just going to spill off into everything. Contentment at work, content with friends, content with uh, with a lover. This is how we are. We we be with the 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 romantic energy, the passionate energy of the inner nymph. And at the same time, be really present with this, with the drive to safety of the inner tribe. And they reconcile each other when you don't take sides. It's purely acknowledgement. You didn't create it, but it's there. Okay. I didn't create the sun, but it's there. <laughs> right? Sometimes it's obscured by the clouds, sometimes not, but it's always there. And I just let it be there. It sounds so freeing of the mind, you know, you're, it's that mind that's anchoring you like you should, you should. And I love that. So hopefully I would say it's, it's not, I said the name wrong and I want to say it properly. So it's Werner, not okay. Werner. <laughs> Thank you, Werner. Yes. That's actually, that. yes. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. Well. I see, I love that we can go over a little bit, but thank you guys for hanging in here with us and <laughs> and and everybody who's had to leave a little bit earlier or they're still with us. We want to wish everybody happy holidays as well, whatever you are doing, whether it's just yes. a happy day or just <laughs> or lots of festivities going on. Um, yes. And actually, you know, it's actually night here. I mean, this is, was the shortest day of the year. Happy winter solstice to everyone. Yes. You know, and it's actually been dark here for three hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah very i'm even farther north than you up there in canada that's uh, right can you guys imagine uh, that <laughs> yeah, it's, it's way up here it's a very short day actually um, but now we head back into the long days again 
And yes, this beautiful so, long um, days. Yeah, by all means, everybody, I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful um, celebration of uh, Christmas or Hanukkah or Buddha's Enlightenment Day or Kwanzaa or the winter solstice or... <sighs> Any other just reason you feel joyful. Yeah, or, <laughs> or just make one up. Yeah. <laughs> I did wear snow I mean, We made here. these up. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I don't often get to show the earrings, but I wore them today. And now we're over time. So yes, we're just there having we go. The, the star earrings, yes. <laughs> oh, well, thank you, everybody. Thank you so much, GP. And we'll see everybody right back here on Tuesday, um, 12 p.m. Eastern time for Ohm School Live again. <laughs> okay. Bye, everyone. Bye, everybody. Mm-hmm. <laughs>